amazing, my beautiful people. Not only coming to you live, spirit and coffee. Got my coffee here. Mm -hmm. So yummo. It's a beautiful mug. Gotta love it. Beautiful craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get started. As you know, I'm reading from the book Sacred Instructions, Indigenous Wisdom for Living Spirit-Based Change by Sherry Mitchell. Um, and it's such a powerful book talking about the um, way of coming back to our understanding. Hey, Tony, how are you? Oh, thank you for being on here. I hope, I hope you're taking care of yourself. That's what I'll say. Um, so talking about <clears throat> the indigenous weight and coming back to our roots, good morning, Betty, and understanding how to, um, take the feminine and masculine energies and distinct roles, um, and how they unfold into our reality. The, the book itself is phenomenal. I highly recommend that you read it. Um, if you're a reader, um, it's, I mean, she just, the way she writes, I think it speaks to the heart of, especially women of color. Um, I, I feel like her language, is, it taps into our soul, our heart. Um, so literally, I highly recommend it. Um, when I was reading, I was like, wow, I love this. I love the way that this woman writes and um, I love her thought process. So um, when we were talking yesterday, um, what I loved is she sort of explains in her own words um, how we see society and why society is sort of showing up the way it's showing up. And the way we see it showing up is, of course, from the patriarchal perspective. And what we're trying to do is reclaim the sacred feminine. We're trying to reopen up those gateways and allow that in energy to flow back in. It's the energy of the heart of love. It's the energy of the of the womb of coddling of having compassion and kindness and caring for for life itself um, and reconnecting to the planet, the earth and allowing us to use our resources in harmony as opposed to just taking and taking and taking. So um, I'll start reading. So masculine and feminine energies play distinct roles in the unfolding of our reality, but they uh, do so in concert with one another. These energies are not gender specific. They exist within all of us and always are best suited for the lives we are meant to live. Nature has provided us with some vital clues about characteristics that these energies carry, but these are merely guideposts that instruct us on how these energies are meant to be used in our lives. The feminine energy represents the inner world. The feminine energy represents the inner world. So when we think even as, um, you know, as mothers or as holding that energy, we hold the energy inside of us, right? Um, and it, it demonstrates the internal world. So internally, we're always birthing something. There's always something inside of us that we're coddling or that we're holding and that we're fostering and that we're growing. When we look at the programming of perhaps our parents, right, um, we were the inner child was actually <laughs> working through us and it was actually growing inside of us, our personalities, right, our, our patterns and all that. So it started off as almost like a tadpole, like this infant thing inside of us. And then it started to grow. But did we grow it fully, right? Or is it dysfunctional? Well, mostly dysfunctional, right? We live, <laughs> I hate to say it, but we are a lot dysfunctional in this world. And it's okay. We're trying to find our way back to functional. <laughs> okay. So the inner world by um, this demonstrate, this is demonstrated by the autonomy, autonomy of our bodies. A woman's reproductive organs are internal and her creative impulses is held within her center in her womb. A woman creates in concert with energy of the heart. The life that is nurtured and cultivated within a woman's body sits just below the heart and is attuned to its rhythm. The woman's body is a bridge between worlds. Within a woman's body are the exits uh, exists a direct link to the source of creation. Okay. 
Thus, the energy of the feminine connects us to divine knowledge that guides the knowledge through the body in direct correlation to the heart. So if we saw it through the chakra system, we would say that our the, the sacred feminine energy lives in the heart, in the compassion, in, in the love that we give. Now, everybody has this inside them, so it's not just women. However, women hold the capacity for this particular energy even greater because we are the child bearers, because we can hold life within us, because we have life just waiting within us to be, you know, created and, and expanded. Good morning, PPG. Um, and so the feminine energy is expansive, intuitive, creative, and life-affirming. The feminine is the keeper of intuition and the translator of heart-based wisdom. So intuition is the big piece. And this is what is truly missing from a lot of our schools. This is what's missing from our organizations. This is what uh, the big key that has been sort of severed or hidden or denied. But as we know, God's great plan cannot be denied the truth will always be revealed even if it takes years and years and years the truth always comes out okay so let's see i'm glad you, uh, you admit to dysfunctional i do lots uh, of people don't oh yeah we're all dysfunctional there is no such <laughs> let me just get into the dysfunction really quickly um because i always love to go where people go right i'm not 100% committed to one agenda, but here's the deal about dysfunction. Everybody is, and everybody has dysfunctional families, and I don't care if people want to act like they don't, they do. Um, it's all an act, you know, if people are acting like everything's perfect. It's not. We all have shit. Everybody has shit. <laughs> um, it's how we deal with our shit and how we wear our shit and how we work with it, right? Um, and we carry our shit with us <laughs> everywhere we go. So um, we are dysfunctional and we're learning how to function in a system that has been dysfunctional. And so that is what I'm talking about when it comes to the sacred feminine. So everything's interconnected. So the dysfunction right now in our world and the reason why there's so much dysfunction is because we've been looking at life through a very narrow lens the lens of patriarchy now is it wrong i have to say this over and over again it's not right wrong good or bad but there are consequences to it and what we see in our dysfunction and is war and the wars raged within because we are trying to find our way back to the sacred feminine the heart the compassion the love See, people right now um, are looking for that connection to love, that connection to the heart. And <laughs> it's hard for people to find that connection back to the heart because all of our systems have been based on a narrow focus. It's just a one-sided thing. And that's the way our society has been constructed. And because of that, we've been taught that way. The educational system is even based on that. Everything. Notice that every major person in history, I think this is starting to change eventually, is male. There were so many females that were um, doing amazing work, yet you don't hear about them in the history books, really. Maybe one or two. But I can name a ton of masculine energy, right? They created this and they created it through the patriarchal system and design, which has led to war. So when we look at it and we're saying, well, yeah, we are dysfunctional. We're saying, how do we, how do we find our way back to functional? Well, we do have, right? We are whole, perfect and complete inside. We just have to remember that. And so it's bringing ourselves to the remembrance that we are both the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine, that we hold both of those. We've been programmed to be more masculine than feminine. You can hear it in the language. It was an honor to bleed 
when, uh, you know, in ancient times, it was an honor to have um, menstruation. We would give blood back to the earth. We would menstruate in the earth. We would actually give our blood to the earth and the earth would take that blood. Now we don't give it to anything. You know, we, we put it in these fabricated um, napkins or whatever <laughs> that have chemicals on them and stuff. Or we're trying to cut it off, you know, I'm me too, myself, but it's because there's no space or place to honor that sacred feminine, which before we were seen as magical creatures. And honored for the fact that we were bleeding out, that we were able to literally cleanse ourselves from the inside and, and let it out. But that's not honored anymore. See, we're very in a very patriarchal way of viewing the world. And when we when we're looking to heal, we got to find our way back to the wholeness of how these two energies function within us. How does the sacred masculine and feminine function within you? Do you know what that looks like? Do you know what that feels like? And when I'm when you're working with the energy and you're saying, OK, well, how does this feel in my body? What does that even look like? What does it mean to be in the energy of the masculine energy? What does it mean to be in the energy of the feminine energy? How do I how do I sort of rectify the two? And how do I, instead of working against the both, work with them together? How do I take those two energies and synergize them into wholeness? It's called integral. It's called integration. Right. The new paradigms that we're working with and the new ways of thinking and thought process are integral integration and holism, looking at how to bridge the gap between the two and how to synergize them rather than <laughs> sort of pull apart or pull away and see them as two distinct things. They're not. They're the same thing. They work together. So the way society has done it is they've pulled it apart, they've separated it, they genderized it, they said, okay, men and women, and, and they said it's separate. Because visually, we can see each other as separate. We see each other as we're separate. We don't think that we're one. Most people don't think we're one. They think it's out there. That's them. This is me. We're different. We're separate. We're not. We're the same. So when we start to rectify and and heal those parts of ourself internally the the masculine feminine energies we start to heal that we start to remember that everything is interconnected and we are one and we start to what they say is is um uh matrimony right where we where we bring it together and we marry the two we consummate that's the word i'm looking for we consummate the sacred feminine and masculine within us we bridge the gap between the two. Now, the sacred feminine is something that hasn't been worked with as much, and it's been really vilified to the point where some people are very afraid of even diving into the energies of the sacred feminine. Sacred feminine energy is the moon. It's the reflection. It's the consciousness. It's that vast space. It's the unconscious. It's that vast space of the unknown. It's the darkness. Most people don't even like to be in the dark. See, they've made us afraid of it. And there's nothing to be afraid of. It is those places that allow us to do our greatest or receive our greatest understanding and knowing and the intuition. So the sacred feminine is about the intuition, which has been taken out. We, we right now are looking at a very um, scientific way of looking at the world where intuition has no place in science. Okay, that's very masculine driven. So intuition is your internal knowing. It's that, that feeling, you know, when you say, oh, I had a gut feeling, I shouldn't have done that. That's intuition. It's this knowing that you have within you where your body talks to you but you can't really put words on it right you can't put words on things that are um intuitive sometimes there's no words for it 
we try to describe it, something will happen internally in us. And then we try to talk to people about it and literally have no words for it. We're like, they're going to think we're crazy. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> They'll just think I'm a wacko. Well, guess what? We're all wacko. So say it anyway. <laughs> Trust me, I say a lot of shit all the time. I've been very cussy lately, so I just apologize. <laughs> but when we when we bridge the gap, when we bring it together, when we recognize the wholeness of who we are, we're able to walk in our authentic self a little closer. And we're able to express ourselves a little more. Yeah, I know, the mug, isn't it beautiful? The potter that did, I mean, it's a, it's magnificent. When we talk about alchemy, talking about how this mug was made is amazing, right? It's such a beautiful mug. <laughs> I was with you when I got it. So thanks, Tony. Um, so really establishing that connection and that bond between the two and developing a relationship with each side. Like, what is it like to be in the masculine energy? What is it like to be in the feminine energy? Notice how you feel when you come home from work. I don't know um, if everybody here has a nine to five job. I know, Betty, you are, you get to stay home. So you get to really experience what it's like to be in the sacred feminine where you're just kind of loosey goosey. I don't know if you have a schedule. If you have a schedule, we would say that that is the masculine energy. Anything focused, directional, and aims for a goal is what we call the sacred masculine. Anything that's intuitive, free-flowing, and flexible and creative would be the sacred feminine. So we learn how to do both and, right? So I know Betty has creative projects, but as she's moving through her creative projects and she comes to the completion, right, that's the sacred feminine It's or masculine. It's honoring the both. But we've been afraid to dive into the sacred feminine. Notice how people talk about feelings. I don't want to talk about those things. What is that? Ugh. I don't, ugh. I don't feel sad. I don't feel, they just, ugh. I don't want to. And then they run away. I don't want to cry. I don't want to, but those are necessary. There is, there's something so powerful. So here's the deal. Crying or tapping into the heart. When we do this, and we allow ourselves to go through the entire process of it, there's always a gem at the end of that process. But we don't allow ourselves to go through it. And literally what ends up happening when we cry is that we dry out and then this divine will comes in. So the fire energy comes in. That's the inspiration. People are always saying, oh, I don't have inspiration. I don't know. I can't, I can't be motivated. I don't know how to be motivated. Well, the reality is, is that you're not allowing yourself to go through the emotional state of being. If you're not allowing yourself to go through that emotional state of being over and over and over again, you're not going to get to that place of inspiration. Okay, inspiration, right? Well, they say it's the spirits, it's the breath. Notice that when you're crying, if you hold it back, you can't breathe. Notice that you get choked up. Notice what happens to the throat chakra when you hold back your tears. See, everything's interconnected. You can't have one without the other. So in order to be inspired, we have to allow the breath to be free flowing. I mean, really, spirit was really just the breath. It was talking about the breath that people didn't understand what was happening. How am I breathing in this thing? What's happening between the breath and my lungs? And how is that keeping me alive? So spirit is really about breathing. It's what keeps us alive. And so... When we don't allow ourselves to go through this emotional state of being, be it crying, we cut the very breath off from who we are. We cut our throat chakra off. We can't breathe. We're suffocating. How can we have inspiration when we're holding back something so valuable? When you let it out, you circle back to inspiration. It's a, You release that energy. It's like emotional acupuncture. I had a friend who used to call it emotional acupuncture. I love that word. So it's like emotional acupuncture. You've got to release it. And once you release it, 
there's an explosion of inspiration that comes after it. I mean, people have held back their tears for so long. There's so much built up in there that once it's like a floodgate and that's okay. Let that flood come out. Drown yourself if you have to in your tears until you come to that space where it's dry enough to spark that divine will and inspire you. Okay, so there's where the inspiration comes from. Okay, so let's see. Um, in contrast, we're going to talk about the masculine. In contrast, the masculine energy is external. This is also reflected in nature as the male reproductive organs are on the outside of the body and indicates that the masculine energy guides our action in the outer world. It is the energy of doing whereas the feminine is the energy of being. Masculine energy is focused and driven, linear and analytical. It is active and external. The feminine needs the masculine to take its initiative, heart-based ideas and manifest them into the outer world. And the masculine needs the heart-based wisdom of the feminine to ensure that those actions honor the sacred and preserve life. This is the most beautiful part of it. And I really wish more people were on this podcast at this point, because literally the way that she describes this next piece is quite phenomenal. And, you know, I might even wait to see if we, if there's more listeners on um, Monday, because I'm not doing Fridays anymore because I work, but Literally, I would love to share this with you guys, and hopefully there'll be more listeners. Again, it's up to God. I don't determine who comes on here. I don't invite people in. It's whoever's supposed to get the message will get the message. Um, and maybe it's just a message for me at this point. Usually if there's... <laughs> everybody's gotten off here, but usually if it's just me, um, I say, okay, well, that was my message for me, and uh, it's there if anybody needs it later on in life. But really what she has to say about um, this is, and she puts it in her words, and it's sort of, like feels like my words, like how I would explain it, but of course it's her, and it's coming from her. But we're all on the same page now. Um, the, the people that are the great... <laughs> the ones that are waking up to make a difference in the world. Starting to recognize that the way we are doing things is not working. It doesn't work. It's distorted and dysfunctional. And it's caused dysfunction in our families, in our communities, in our societies, in our economies. but we can fix it. And even if it's me by myself, <laughs> I don't know if Tari, Tony, are you still on here? I see that no one's on here. So I don't know if anyone's on here. However, I will say that this part of the book is the most amazing part of the book. Um, because it talks about, again, the masculine needs the heart-based wisdom of the feminine. And this is to ensure that the actions honor the sacred and preserve life. We are not preserving life right now. Hey, Tom, right now we are not preserving life. We are so far disconnected from the sacred feminine. We have allowed the mass, the sacred masculine to take the reins and totally sever the sacred feminine. That is why we see that we are not in harmony with nature. It's an easy fix. Will we do it? I don't freaking know. I don't know. I want to have faith in humanity. I want to say that us humans are going to come to this realization and open up our eyes. But how many? The people that we quote unquote allow to lead us do not give a shit. That's how I feel. Now internally I can't say I know them because I don't know them. But from the actions and the distortions that I see in the world, in our educational systems, in the designs, in our um, companies, 
these corporate giants and these people with their greed, I don't know that they're going to change. I don't know that they're going to open up their freaking eyes. I don't even know that they give a shit. So I don't know. But I, what I do know is that it starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with us as a person. We have to rectify and we have to heal the internal dysfunction that was programmed in us over time. You can't expect somebody to do it for you. It's not going to happen. You have to do it for you. You have to start to look at you. You have to start to be self-aware about you and look internally and say, shit, where am I responsible? How do I heal this? How do I start with me so that I can heal my family, so then I can heal my community, so that I can heal my society, my economy? the planet and live in harmony with this world. We're battling, we're raging war against mother earth. I think that's just crazy to me. It's mind boggling. I don't know what to do except to work on me and deliver the message to you to work on you. And hopefully enough people will work on themselves and then we can gather together. We do have tribes that come together that have hold that sacred wisdom and say, uh-uh, not today. But it's not enough. It's not enough. I don't know if we'll get there. I certainly hope and pray we do. We may not. And that's okay, too. Because guess what? We'll just repeat the shit all over again. <laughs> We'll self-sabotage, we'll destroy everything, and what I mean by everything, not Earth, well, yes, Earth, she'll fight back, but really what we're doing is destroying ourselves. we're destroying our species, we're self-sabotagers, it's crazy, I, the human psyche freaks me out, I don't understand it, <laughs> we self-sabotage ourselves, that's what we're doing. Especially when we're raging war against the people we love, when we're raging war against other people, when we're pointing fingers and we're saying you and me and we're going to fight and battle and we have families that are torn apart and are fighting and there's war and rectify it, figure it out or don't, up to you. There's a consequence between either one of them. So I'm just praying that people wake up to who they are. The way that this woman writes this is beautiful. I'm going to wait until Monday because I literally hope that more people, I will pray that God sends more people to hear this message. It's not my message. It is, but it's not. It's this woman who's speaking of how do the indigenous cultures, how did they live before? How did they honor the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine so that everybody was living in harmony? We're not living in harmony right now. If we were, everybody would be getting along and we're not. Families are fighting. Families are breaking apart, right? Our freaking governments are fighting amongst each other like children. Like, come on. Get a grip. Grow grow the up is what I want to say. <laughs> Start loving each other. No, this is mine. This is my territory. You can't have this resource. This is my resource. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Anywho. As a rant and rave on that one. So let's see. Praying every day. Helps keep you grounded. Yes, I do. I pray every day. Thank you for that. Um, did I feel... Good morning, Brett. Um, oh, it's Bert. <laughs> Let's get off and on. Um, did you feel weird energy yesterday? I've been feeling weird energy a lot, not just yesterday. There's a lot going on. Um, I literally have not watched any news. I don't know what's going on in the world. I don't watch the news. I don't pay attention. I just live my life. Um, they feed us a bunch of, um, bullshit. So good morning, Lion. Oh, it's Swan 52. Hey, Swan. Um, they feed us a bunch of 
junk on TV, so I don't ever watch it. I don't know what's going on. Um, what I'm doing is building something that allows people to remember who they are. And I can't do that when I have 50 billion things at me. But I can tell you this. I can tell you that I can feel the energy shifting. I can feel when things are going in a direction that's not really good. You know why? Because I know myself, I know my family, and I can see what's happening. If my family is behaving a certain way, then I can guarantee that other families are behaving a certain way. And if their families are behaving a certain way, then that's the society's behaving a certain way. And if that society's behaving a certain way, it's because the government's behaving a certain way. You see, it grows from within you and then it expands outward. And again, I talked about prophecy the other day. It's not prophecy. It's pattern reading. We read patterns. So it's very simple to say, I know that there's a war being raged internally in people. People don't like themselves. People have these internal dialogues that are just mind boggling to me. What they say about themselves, how they feel about themselves. Can, can you look in the mirror and say, I love you? Can you truly look in the mirror and say, I love you? I love you. I care about you. I'm here for you. People are so, 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 so disconnected from self love. And it shows up in the world as within, so without. So how many people will look internally and start to heal that conversation internally and love themselves? I don't know. I hope more people. <laughs> because when they do, then we can come to love, harmony, and peace. In this particular space and time, I don't think, I don't know. But yes, the energy is starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The dark, the shadow has to reveal itself before we can get into the light. So it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting, challenging time. Remember, it's spiritual war, not, you know, they say it's a biochemical, it's this and that. Really, it's spiritual. Come to terms with who you are. Love who you are. Remember, you are whole, perfect, and complete. You are the face of God. You are beautiful. You have all of this stuff inside of you that the world is asking for. Your soul purpose, your divine purpose, the thing that you get to leave behind, everybody is asking for it. They're longing for it. They want to see you. God sees you. And I loved it. The Rev Reverend Armani, when I, was, uh, I went to the, uh, listening to this Reverend Armani, she's really good, that she says, I want to see the, I want to see the face of God in you. Because that's what I see. And I want you to remember that. And I want you to feel that. And I want you to remember that that's who you are. And that you allow that to come forward because the world is longing to see that. So you are beautiful. Remember that you are love. This is a place of love. This is a place where you can come. This is family, right? This is a place where you are accepted, whole, perfect, and complete, no matter what shows up. And trust me, some crazy stuff has showed up, but we don't fight against it. We love it. We love up on it so much that people start to say, wow, I didn't know that was possible. So I love you guys. <laughs> I'm excited for Monday. Please show up for those who are still on here on Monday, because honestly, whatever this woman, the way she, sacred instructions is the book and the, the way she's written it. It's just, it's so inspiring and so beautiful. And it's a remembrance of how we used to live as a society in harmony with the sacred feminine and masculine and how that synergy and that harmony and balance between the two allowed for us to cultivate the internal divine within us. So there you have it. So I love you guys. 
Have a great day. And I will see you all on Monday. Bye-bye.